The claim is that gun bans make us safer. And as such, 1,500 previously restricted and non-restricted firearms are now prohibited. The legislation was pushed through without a democratic vote and was propped up by the tragedy in Nova Scotia. But the firearms, are they the actual problem here? A CBC article on the Nova Scotia shooter and the firearms used mentions that all but one firearm was not even from Canada. What, what, what would banning all these guns from Canada have done to stop the illegal smuggling of firearms into Canada? The blame is sometimes and perhaps oftentimes passed on to the U.S. for the gun violence that we see in Canada. That also really isn't the problem. Consider an article from the Washington Post on uh, a, a study of global firearm ownership that points out that over the last 20 years, the number of firearms in the U.S. has grown, ballooned, exploded by about 150 million firearms. Using mainstream media leftist logic, more gun availability means more crime. But when you look at the actual research, consider the Pew research done on facts about crime in the U.S. It says violent crime has actually been going down steadily in the U.S. Well, not, not up. Guns going up and crime coming down in about the same time, about that 20 years time span, roughly the same amount of time as the number of guns has increased by somewhere around 150 million or roughly 65% more guns, violent crime has decreased, gone down by 50%. CNN, they have a article also on the Nova Scotia shooting investigation, and they point out of the 22 that were killed in this horrific tragedy, wasn't 22 killed by firearms. It was 13 and nine were killed by fire. Half the people killed in this tragic massacre were killed by fire and not firearms. Should we, I don't know, ban matches or lighters? There's in fact more deaths involving alcohol than firearms. Uh, according to StatsCan, there are less than 270 deaths per year for gun-related incidents. Less than an average of one death a day, about one every day and a third. But even if we bump that up a ton to an average of one death a day, it still pales in comparison to alcohol-related deaths. According to Mothers Against Drunk Driving, on impaired driving statistics, there's an average of four deaths a day due to the effects of alcohol and or drugs. Four. So even if we bump up the firearm statistics, the number of deaths, which was, remember, less than one a day, but we let's bump it up to one a day. There are still four times more deaths in Canada due to impaired driving because of alcohol and or drugs. Between 1,250 and 1,500 deaths each year from alcohol and drugs compared to less than 270 for the scary, dreaded guns. It would make more sense to ban alcohol or marijuana, which Justin Trudeau himself legalized in October of 2018. He took the ban off of something that takes more Canadian lives than what he is now banning in the, the form of firearms. Again, Mothers Against Drunk Driving on cannabis and driving an article and this is comparing 2014 so yes a number of years ago in 2014 there were 155 gun related deaths so we'll compare apples to apples here back in 2014 155 gun related deaths in 2014 there were 299 deaths from just alcohol more than guns all right in 2014 there were also 618 deaths from just drugs, more than guns. Now that's a whole range of, of, of drugs, but also in the article, it mentions that about 50% of those drug-related deaths were due to 
marijuana. All right. In 2014, there were 356 deaths from a combination of both drugs and alcohol. So we'll split that in half, just for comparison, and assign half to alcohol, half to drugs. Math, coming back. All right, stick with me. These are a lot of numbers, but they help with if we want to get to the bottom of this. 178 deaths added to the 299 for alcohol gives us a total of 477. 178, that split in half, one, added to 618 for drugs gives us a total of 796. But again, remember only half marijuana, which is what Trudeau legalized. So we'll cut that number in half and we get 398 deaths for marijuana. 477 for alcohol, 398 for marijuana. And where were guns? 155 in that year. So on their own, alcohol contributes to more than triple, triple, three times the deaths as compared with guns. And marijuana, which Trudeau and the liberals thought was fine, fine and dandy, let's legalize it, that contributes to more than double the deaths as guns. I'm not bringing up these stats to say that we should go back to the 20s and prohibition. I'm making the case that if we were to prohibit something, if we were to prohibit something to save lives, it would make more sense to start with other items rather than firearms. What I'm really wanting is more freedom, not cracking down, taking away options for those who follow the law, but let's instead crack down on the ones who are breaking the laws. As we looked at in my last video, we can achieve less crime with fewer gun restrictions and instead harsher punishments for the criminals, you know, the ones breaking the laws. As conservative prime minister Stephen Harper did this from 2006 to 2015, we saw a d decrease in homicides, less deaths, unlike what we see when the liberals got in and they touted that we're proud of our record in undoing what Harper had done, and despite the fact that there were less deaths under Harper and the Conservatives, I'm saying that there is room for more freedom for you and I, for law-abiding citizens, if we would just enforce more strictly, and you know what, yes, more harshly, the laws that we already have. For those who do not own a firearm, consider these stats and hope, I hope they're eye-opening for you. <laughs> for, for those who are firearms owners already, hopefully these stats are interesting for you as well. Maybe they're eye-opening as well. Maybe you're pro-gun but didn't even realize that, hey, there's a lot less guns, a lot less deaths, uh, more guns and less deaths than what I thought. Arm yourselves, pun intended, with these facts. Share this video share this information, combat your liberties being taken away. We can fight with facts by getting rid of ignorance, informing those who don't know any better. Law-abiding gun owners, the truth, it's on your side. We just need to share it. Hey, I really do think you should share these facts with others. It would mean a lot if you share this video. It would mean a lot also if you hit the subscription button, hit that like button if you liked it. And you know what? Hit the little bell notification thing as well because I think that lets you know when dinner's ready. And uh, if you want to check out other videos, I'm not going to stop you. It's a free country for now.